Hello, universe. Welcome to Pickathon Podcast. I'm your host, Zale Schoenborn. This is episode 26 in the uh, the journey of Pickathon Podcast. And this is a podcast about discovery and kind of just going into the cracks of the cultural universe and just trying to like bring out cool stories. Kind of ends up being creative journeys a lot of times. Today, my guest is uh, Felipe from the incredible psych rock band, Sergeant Papers. I'm really excited to talk to him. And it was just a real pleasure having them at the festival. Lots of great stories to share. <laughs> and one of the things I was just kind of kicking around is having kind of connections to amazing bands and just feeling lucky in the psych rock scene. Like psych rock has been this cool kind of cornerstone of Pickathon for years. We've really kind of tapped into this universe took us a while like i remember way back when we were trying to convince you know heavier bands psych rock bands you know every music scene that you want to kind of like tap into kind of ends up happening because somebody important in that world vouched for you oh it was awesome and we really kind of started back in like 2010 11 11. we we were able i had had a friend um i played with his name's jesse Ebo, he uh, it's a really good friend of mine. He was in this incredible kind of like metal band, but he was also this awesome. Now he's a pedal steel player in this great band, country band called Tender Things. But when I knew him and we were friends, uh, we were playing kind of like you know, kind of punk rock bluegrass in Kentucky. He was like a stand up bass player playing with like my next door neighbor, three doors down. His name was Andy King, and he's just like just kind of like a he's a legend now in alaska incredible singer um shout out to andy king hopefully you hear this one day um him and my brother my brother eric and was, you know i was thinking about that connection because what that led to was kind of the heartless bastards jesse ended up being the bass player in this incredible band and it wasn't so it wasn't truly it was a kind of a psych rock band but it was like a kind of a heavy grungy stoner rock band the early heartless bastards was just incredible i can't even if you go back and you listen to that the records that came out erica she was incredible you know that kind of opened the door to uh a, another amazing band back then heavier kind of in the psych rock stoner rock um black mountain and i will never forget it was like just it was it's awesome like there was this great scene actually when the heartless bastards were playing pickathon in 2010 they were in the galaxy barn we also we had this, you know, kind of, we were just getting started. We didn't really know the city Happy Valley that much. We had a little bit of connections with them, but there was this uh, time when I think we had a, a, a band playing on the Starlight, which is this outdoor, it's the old stage we have. Now we have kind of different stage names, but Starlight was like last stage. It was like one in the morning and it was, it was a friend of ours. Uh, what was the name? Uh, they were from Nashville. Oh, I can't remember. But they were wailing, just rocking. And somehow somebody called the police on Pickathon and six, you know, county, city, state troopers show up at our parking lot with dogs. And like, I didn't see that part, but there was, I don't know if it was the city, but I knew it was the county and 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 they were there. They, our, our security person came out there and they were like coming to shut us down. They were going to like, and, and our security person went out there and talked to him like, I don't know if you know, but there's a lot of, there's like 2,500 people camping here. There's not really going to, can't really like shut this place down. And in the barn, we were all in there. It was, it was heartless bastards just destroying that barn, just absolutely tearing the barn apart. And the door was open and the they thought it was this barn that was like causing all the problems and they're like no no it was this you know they didn't know we really kind of this there was confusion and we kind of made this deal that we were gonna you know shut the barn door and we you know we quickly did and our sound guy was kind of freaking out because we knew there was all these uh these cops outside and you know as much as we were we were totally getting along and talking to them and like kind of letting them know what was going on like now we're like were super tight so like that was this is early <laughs> they saw this kind of like mayhem going on and our sound guy kind of whispers in the ear of jesse and he's like for the good of pickathon you need to you need to shut this you need to quit and he's like what 
and they just kept rocking and playing and it never really got any we never got in big trouble but it was like this the all of us were like super tense oh my god they're gonna come rushing in here and like shut us down and you know i always feel like we're always kind of on the edge of danger in our psych you know like which is kind of some of the fun and that just that year kind of blew up like after that you know black mountain In 2013 or 14, we had our first time we had Ty Siegel and he was, he was like so seminal for us. We've had him almost like, I don't know, four or five times now. Incredible. And he came kind of thinking that it was like an acoustic thing. And then when he saw how just out of hand people were into it, he kind of blew it up. Even acoustically, they kind of rocked and just shredded. And he's brought progressively this more and more amazing bands also, 2012, we had the OCs. Like, I mean, now they're OCs. That was mind blowing. I can't even explain to you. Like, if you've not seen OCs, you are missing out on the best live show. You know, which I think is kind of um, a lot like our guests. But you know, thinking of uh, Johnny Dwyer, like he came back, I think 2016 or 17, and you know, every time it's just so crazy. We had this, we had this like zombie apocalypse. There's this great videos of the barn, double drummers that year out at the barn and in the woods. It's one of the scariest moments. Like every time you hear somebody who didn't expect to go out there, like there, it was, they both loved it and were totally scared by it. Cause if you looked out in this great video we have on, on YouTube of, of the OCs in the woods, you get these glimpses of the woods and the lights up into it. And it's like bodies roiling, like a zombie apocalypse, like ah! just people just like having the time of their life. And Johnny Dwyer is just like, you know, just tearing it up. People didn't think, you know, for a while there was like rules. Oh, you can't have that kind of hard band. You can't have a rap band out at the wood stage. We're like, yeah, you can. Yeah, we can. We had, I mean, even earlier, I think we had this band called Diarrhea Planet, which was pretty awesome, like psych rock band. And then, and then it just kind of goes from there. BBCs, Viagra Boys, all kinds of like, you know, kind of heavy rock, psych rock. There's, it all kind of mixes in a bit there. And it's always just like this year, the Wine Lips and Sergeant Papers. And, and they were both incredible bands and i just i it's a sweet spot for us it's like we will always have psych rock i know folks that just sometimes just kind of like i know those are for the kids i was like no it's it's the best shows you'll ever see you need to go and the you know my guest here today is one of those bands i'm really excited let's let's talk to felipe How you doing? Hello, Sal. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Just entertained listening to the early Picaton stories. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so awesome to kind of like, you know, bring that energy into small, small places or big places. I think it's, I mean, I, w- I was, th- you know, doing some research on, on you guys. Like, where did you where did you grow up? We grew up here in my hometown. I'm in Hermosillo in Sonora. Mm -hmm. So for those who doesn't know what part of Mexico is this, it's like the northwest of Mexico. It's the the Sonora Desert, which is the same. We share the uh, one big desert with Arizona. So if you've been to Arizona, it's kind of the same. Big cactus, uh, red sands, and and beautiful sunsets. Oh, yeah. And great. Lots of uh, square feet and <laughs> few people, cows, <laughs> and crazy people too, uh, in the good way. It's a great town, right? Like it's a it's a major town. Like it's the culturally. I always hear. I mean, some people even compare it to like Austin or early Austin. Yeah, like that's that's new because uh, we are like historically like mining, uh, farming. Uh, town you know Mm -hmm. we're like the mexican like rural kind of redneck part of the country for the people who who for the people who live in the center you know because around uh the center of mexico around mexico city is where most of the country's population is like uh concentrated so and the north and the northwest is really spread out yeah it's it's really different. It's really different, but but and we were not known for like culture and shit. Like, really, th- there has always been like 
some famous singers in the 40s, in the 50s, and like this band called Los Apson, yeah. which, you know, they were like, they were the first one to like cover like Beatles and Beach Boy songs mm -hmm. to Spanish, and they brought it to the masses in that time. They are from Agua Prieta, Sonora. That's the app song. Mm -hmm. AP is Agua Prieta, mm -hmm. Son Sonora. That's where they... There's been like a few little things here and there, but lately I think uh, Hermosillo and Sonora in general is really exporting a, a lot of uh, culture and yeah. I'm really proud to be part of that. That's great. And did you... I mean, like traditional music, right? There's a couple like really yeah. kind of popular traditional styles from that region, right? Yeah. That's one of the most exciting things that I think right now is happening in Mexican music. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's, well, I mean, going way back, it's like, is it banda? Is that right? Banda. Banda is like in regional music, banda is like one format of, imagine regional music being country music and banda just being like the bluegrass quartet. Yes. You know? Okay. It's, it's just like a specific configuration of a banda sinaloense. Yeah, and cor corrido is that a corrido? Co yeah, corrido is like a format of song. Yeah, which is like a story. Yeah, and it was used as a. I don't know a lot about like country music uh, history, but we we use it became popular in the revolution because mm -hmm. you know it, it was like violence everywhere and like uh, uh, they they use it as to spread stories and spread the news. Yeah. So that's when the corrido was born. Yeah. And so what was popular when you were growing up? Like what was what were you hearing? What what made you want to start playing guitar, keyboard? Like uh I don't know, man. Like like here it's it's like a really uh, mixed culture because we there's this part of Mexican uh, regional music which uh, we all grew up around, but the cool stuff was was like getting to know other bands. In the 90s, wh where I, when I was born, uh, a lot of uh, Spanish uh, rock bands and Mexican rock bands started, like uh, Caifanes, Café Tacuba, uh, Molotov, uh, and Cher. And all the same, at the same time, there was like, uh, at least in, in my town and around the people I knew, and my cousins and shit, they were into punk music mm -hmm. and rock music. And they had like no effects tapes, like a lot of things from the West Coast, you know, like American mm -hmm. punk rock music mm -hmm. and Operation Ivy mm -hmm. and those kind of stuff. So also like Blink-182, <laughs> like that, that's, that's yeah. the stuff that, that got to us. Yeah, so, so I learned to play like the guitar in elementary school. But it was like acoustic guitar, you know, and, and yeah. you play this kind of Mexican old music. That's mm -hmm. why they show you. But mm -hmm. then you saw like they started selling like cheap electric guitars here. Yeah. And I was like, I want that. And that sounds <laughs> cooler. <laughs> That's awesome. Did someone teach you when you got it? Or did you just start like putting on tapes and learning? Like uh, a little bit of both. Like my, when I was fortunate to have a, a good music uh, professor in, in elementary school. And he saw like I got potential and told my parents that, hey, these guys, he, 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 he that little boy, he, <laughs> he can, he has like ear, just keep him, he's good for it. Let's just keep him playing. And I went to like a couple of summer stuff, we you know, when you, you, but it was elementary school and, and I learned a, a little bit about it. And like from when I was 10 or 11, I just like uh, did it myself. You know, I, I didn't get really into like uh, reading uh, music and like learning uh, these complicated songs of whatever. No, I just I just played on my own, which which I am really grateful I did because I've seen a lot of musicians get in in that um, like hardcore trained musician, mm -hmm. which you, sometimes you see some people playing like incredible, but I think at the same time, it, it can narrow your view of what can it be done yeah. in music. Yeah, I always think of that. Some of the most incredible music comes from people that had to figure it out on their own. 
you know, because uh-huh. they didn't get that kind of guardrails. No, this is how you do it. You must do it this way. You know, like I think uh, it's always it surprises me, like how some some kind of un, you know somebody who really figured it out on their own is the people that are actually creating the new music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it it gets you to new places because you you get from different places or your own reasonings or your own experiences or whatever Mm -hmm. and sometimes you fuck up in the process and maybe it takes you longer but it takes you to somewhere in the sound that maybe it wasn't possible if if you just follow the path others told you to follow you know yeah and it seems like there was i mean there was you're been part of like a there was like there's a real psych rock scene there right uh, you were the first band you were in was was it the Mud Howlers? The Mud Howlers was the name of the band. Yeah, <laughs> and that was like a yeah. that's like a there was a scene. There was even like you guys had a festival, right? Like a there was yeah. We used to make a festival here and and in, in the this like uh, we I started playing in that band when I was in college because mm-hmm. these guys from my hometown, which I knew like from high school and you know little house shows and mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, they were also like forming the band and so we were to the same college just different cities so they told me hey man we need somebody to play the keys join us and just change the campus which you can do here i was in monterrey studying uh, music production and i just changed to to mexico city and it was fun man it was fun and at the same time i think it was like a uh psych rock scene developing here yeah and we and then we we stayed in mexico city for a few years we tried the la thing you know the the thing that i gotta go to la with my band and we're gonna make it big. how was it uh it sucked <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh living no, in a van like, kind of living with friends not really like Actually, like these guys, they do good. Like the 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 rest of the band, uh, they they are like like more business uh, kind of people. I am like a really like I just have music. I don't have any <laughs> business. So. <laughs> so, but they 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 balance it for me. They they, mm-hmm. they were cool, and it wasn't that fucked up. Uh, you know, like leaving a band. It wasn't that hard, but but it was hard on the part of. You don't get to play the shows you want. You play mm-hmm. on a Tuesday on this bar that mm-hmm. nobody goes to. Mm-hmm. You see, like, if you're Mexican and you're singing in, in English, people just don't give a shit about you. Mm-hmm. Like, like mm-hmm. we were at that time, like, the, the idea was like, no, we got to sing in English because we want to open for a more international public, you know, mm-hmm. which is not that stupid if you think about it. But... At the same time, um, I think it was a time like the last decade when people were like, hey, hey Ivan, just join us. Hi, uh, Ivan, how you doing? <laughs> Very good. At the same time, I think it was like a a, a, um, a time with, where people around the world were opening for another languages and another cultures and another and some other stuff. So... So when when that ended and I started this band with this guy, my little brother, when we came back to to Hermosillo, mm-hmm. we started doing this festival, Posadelic. Yeah. And and making our own stuff. Uh more in um, something more, you know, like psych rock can be cool, can be heavy, can be like really deep. But sometimes it can be really uh, ethereal and doesn't talk about nothing, you know, very, very uh, fairy like and used to Mm -hmm. start talking about stars and things that really doesn't make sense in the real life. Yeah, I think. No, I totally agree. So we did this new this new thing, Sergeant Papers, more thinking like um, like a more relaxed thing. Yeah, like a more mundane in a good way, uh, but at the same time, I think it has some parts that get really, you know, oh like yeah, crazy. And <laughs> I mean, I love, I love that that that's kind of like this DIY that fest the festival. What was the name of the festival? You guys? 
Posadelic. It's like the, the mm -hmm. it's like the the combination of the word posada, you know, posadas, mm -hmm. the Mexican Christmas parties, and, and psychedelic. Mm -hmm. It was like a psychedelic posada, you know. So, that... and it went on <laughs> like all the way up to COVID, right? It was like out the like the yeah. the final one looked really cool. Like you guys were out in a desert somewhere. Yeah, it, it's a, it's like. 15 minutes from the city. It's, it's kind of like a uh, picathon, mm -hmm. the setting, you know. It's not a farm and we don't have the like beautiful trees, but we have like sunsets and like a, a, like some uh, desert landscapes which which uh, look really cool. And yeah, it's, it's kind of the same the same vibe. Yeah. Like obviously our festival was done really really the which I I think like at, at some point, Picathon was like that, really oh, small yeah. DIY. Totally. And and yeah, but we stopped because of COVID and because honestly, I appreciate festivals who, who have us and people like you who put on festivals because I have lived the nightmare that it is <laughs> to put on a festival. Yes, all the so, little things, any little thing you forgot can be a disaster. <laughs> you can do 99% yeah. good things and then 1% can be... So, yeah, so I'm really glad we don't do that anymore, but at the same time, <laughs> I miss it and, and have this um, this like kind of urge to make something around here, to keep it alive, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm happy right now with... The way it's yeah, I mean, and so when COVID hit, I mean, so you let did the, did you leave the mud howlers around COVID, or when did you started? Because you guys started with your brother in 2018, right? That was the first record. Yeah, we started like a, a little bit before of that. Nothing too serious, but we were like jamming and playing and and you know like just having fun. I love it. Sergeant Paper's Lonely Psych Punk Band. That's a great record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such, that was the first It's one. a classic too. Like so how do you guys write? Do you guys just kind of like who who does the who does the writing in your band? Like how do you guys come up with it? That first record was like a lot of uh, jamming mm -hmm. and then me trying to make uh, shape it, you know, into a song. And and like that, but from from that on, I, I just like write the guitar parts, sometimes like and and the and the lyrics and everything, and I just like even like program like MIDI stuff on the drums, mm -hmm. and I show it to Ivan, and he's like, that thing is cool, that's impossible, uh, I can do that, or maybe he changes <laughs> a little bit uh, around his part, mm -hmm. and and put give some input into it, but almost. I, I do it like on my own alone. Yeah. Which I I really enjoy, to be honest. Yeah, I get it. It's like a creative some I mean the process sometimes is even is the reason I you know, I do it. I always say like you, things like a festival or whatever you create go by super quickly, right? So it's you better enjoy the process, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. The just the this is just the final explosion of it, but the the uh, the process is is fun yeah of course it's it's interesting um evan you did you learn drums like early on like when did you start learning drums yeah it was i was like five six <laughs> and i started hitting stuff and i remember i was in a hotel room in tucson maybe mm -hmm. i was like five and mm -hmm. We bought like at a toy store. It was like the drum kits were made out of paper. Yes, <laughs> and the drum kit lasted like two minutes. <laughs> I, that's like my first memory of starting to play drums, like five. And then it went on like a little bit more serious. But I spent like a lot of years playing drums, like learning songs I liked in drums, and just like figure figure out like rhythms and like all that stuff feels and shit were you guys jamming together all your whole lives like when not really no felipe was in bands when i was a kid with his friends and but he was like in the age you know like oh yeah my friends and and i was like starting to learn to play drums but we started jamming like maybe after he was in that transition of getting out of the mud and like yeah also like uh, we 
I don't know if it if you can tell, but we we were born seven years apart. <laughs> so he, when I was a teenager, he was baby. You know? <laughs> yes, can't go on tour with the when yeah, when yeah, they're yeah. still in grade school. So. But when I came back, like he was playing, he was like a teenager now. He was like 17, 18, and he was playing really, really good. So I was like, fuck these people that I don't like. I, I want to make a band <laughs> with my brother. <laughs> that's so awesome. And so that's how it started, right? Yeah. That's how it started. That's great. And like, you know, I'm really curious because were you, when you guys started, have you been coming up to the States ever since your first record? Or is that, how do you... Where do you tour? Where does where does a band like you guys go? Like, how do you how do you make a living? I think the first time we went to the states, uh, some friends of ours invited to a festival called Stone and Dusted, mm. and usually we have like one date somewhere, and we try to make something around it. You know, like more dates or travel a little more. So mm-hmm. I th- I think that was the first time in my head. Yeah, it. I think it. Yeah, same. It was the first time we went to the U.S. At the beginning, we were just playing here in Hermosillo. Mm-hmm. Like we played like scene shows, and then we got one uh, festival that it's done here called Saguaro Fest. Mm-hmm. That was like our first festival, and that was because we put out the record and they heard it and they liked it. So I think it's really important to put out recorded music you know so oh, people for forget that material but, in general Beatles yeah pe- that's the only yeah that's like your 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 only the only window the people have about what are you doing and if they like it it, it opens up a lot of doors so yeah the first time uh, like some some guys some friend of us uh, were sponsors of this festival son and dusted and they showed to the guys, like, they, they were like, hey, we want to bring a band from Mexico. Can you recommend us something? And they showed it, like, a record, I think the first one. It, this was 2018? 18. 2018. Yeah, 2018. And and they liked it, and they took us there. And it was it also was in Joshua Tree, which is, oh, like... beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and from Hermosillo, like, 10 hours nonstop. <laughs> 10 11 hours non-stop driving yeah so it's not that far you know yeah. like you you can get there with 80 bucks of, of gas <laughs> so, <laughs> and and did you so, tour yeah. a bunch in the states early on or like were you mostly touring and not a bunch but i think that that first year i think we went to viva pomona also uh, uh mm-hmm. like festival in pomona i think it was that same year like we we had like one a couple uh dates out in the states yeah and then we started to figure out that we should meet some people in tucson because every time we go to california we have to drive by by arizona Mm -hmm. so uh, they started booking us in tucson in phoenix and then we met people there and now every time we get booked in the u.s like something uh, lately, what we've been doing is they book us like on Portland or around or in Seattle. So we're like, maybe we can just like drive our, our way up and just play all along the way. Yeah. And and it's but it's been do, it's like the four. This last one was like the fifth time we we like make a couple of, of like a mini tour of the U.S. or like a. It has been the longest one and the funnest one too, but. But yeah, it's it's something that we have been learning, you know, learning how to uh, get there, how to get booked, how to uh, like the highways, like <laughs> and the and the and the numbers of it also. Like, should we just fly in and do this date and come back, or like, is it better if we do this and you know, like and figuring up roads? Yes, the business the, side, <laughs> the business business log- logistics side. Which I think it's also very exciting for for it's, it's like a little, or a little it's like a mini game. I said like a <laughs> like farm wheel or something like that. Yes, you know, it's like Oregon I Trail. Think, yes, we had to seriously organize a snack budget <laughs> because ah, yeah. sometimes it, it gets out of control. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, Topo yeah, Chico budget. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, the top watch. Yeah, no, man. Like, it, it, and and it's fun. Like this last time, I was like, uh, like writing down all the every gas station snack, like everything. And at the end, I I made like this cool graph on how we spend the money and how how we can save some <laughs> like for the next time. Snacks <laughs> like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> snacks is the biggest one. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, that's awesome. But the Picathon weekend, we didn't spend a lot on snacks because you guys had great food. And also gave us like this bag with with some goodies, in it, <laughs> which was great. Yes, shout out to Craig C and uh, Tin Care of Artists. Uh, yeah, that was that was so so. Yeah, our intersection with you, and I'll just I'm gonna thank Spotify. I found you guys through kind of the connections to other bands that I love. It wasn't like a you know, it was just one of those random finds, and I was instantly new when I heard you guys. Oh my God! What the hell is this? This is incredible. It's just this so. This is the first time I'm gonna thank Spotify for something. Cause I know <laughs> it's not great for everything, but it's sometimes yeah. sometimes like somebody's listening to this and then they're also listening to that, and that's what actually kind of does work for for pro promoters, but even for for artists. Like I think sometimes you get you just get kind of thrown into like you know the stream, and that's cool. There was a video you guys had. I want to know where the heck it was. If um, it was like the sun was going down. Ooh. Where was this place? It was like a wrecked building. It was like an abandoned building from the like electricity yes. company. Yeah, from, from the, the electricity like, guild. They have this like place for parties and graduations and weddings of the people from the from the electricity union. Yeah, but it's it's been abandoned for like. 50 years and it's just right by the airport here it's, it's like at, at the edge of the city do they do and shows there like what's the story behind that place and you guys filming that uh people were skating there yeah the skaters took over it yeah so they were the first ones so i i knew one kind of like a skater leader you know, like, hey, man, like, is it, if, is it cool if we do a live session here? This, and they were, yeah, man, you said it, like, the place is for everybody. And we were like, oh, cool. Because <laughs> we, uh, like, in 2019, we went to play Viva Pomona. Uh, and then these guys were doing uh, this thing called Mexican Candy, mm -hmm. which they, they did some little, like, splits and, like, live sessions of Mexican music. Mm hmm uh, and they asked us to do it, so we did it, and and yeah, it it was That's it right. was fun because we hadn't played at at that point. We 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 were inactive for like seven or eight months. Like you know, it was a pandemic. So oh yeah, that was done during the pandemic, huh? Yeah, which was probably surreal. I mean, the cool part of that video, if no one's ever seen it. Um, it's Mexican candy. So that's the what you should search for. Sergeant Papers, Mexican candy. Mexican it's, candy. Yeah, it's. It's this, the sun is going down behind you and they're shooting into the sun with you guys just absolutely shredding. And no one could believe that video. Like that's the, especially um, just, I, I played at so many parties and it was <laughs> like, you know, they just gets better as you watch too. You just kind of get into it. And what's, you know, with, when people hear your music, one of the things that I think they don't understand is there's just two of you. And oh yeah, it, it, you were like kind of effortlessly, Felipe, using loops and pedals and riffing over top of it and kind of bringing in your guitar parts. You're building that every time, right? Those aren't pre-recorded. You're like looping. No. Yeah, everything is, is done on the spot always. Uh, not effortlessly. It may, it may look like that, but it took a lot of fuck-ups with audience yeah. you know, to perfect it. So... Right now it is at a point where we're comfortable with it, but you know, always trying to 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 make it sound better. But I think it's part of the fan of the fun of of the band. You know, like uh, okay, the rule is it's just gonna be you and me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we gotta we gotta play around without rule to make it sound as good as we can. 
or as big or as heavy, you know? Absolutely. So it's exciting. It's it's like a, a challenge, but we love it. Oh, that's great. I, lo I, think it, I think you use it really well because a lot of times loops just, you know, are just kind of extra sometimes. But with you guys, it's it makes almost... It makes it multiplies you like there's six of you or something at times. I'm like, what is going on? How is that two people? It doesn't make any sense. And it's <laughs> it's so cool. One time uh, early, we played a show here mm -hmm. and in Hermosillo and, and a guy, you know, the, the, the pedal were watchers. There's always like oh, yeah. those at the show. And he saw my pedal and he said like, that's cheating. That's cheating. These guys cheat. That's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what pedal do you use? That's actually good. What pedals do you uh, use? Like uh, some uh, Foss, like I got a Cbex uh, Mastotron. I got like a Flanger, mm -hmm. which... It's, it's like a really specific flanger that detunes and destroy it, mm -hmm. which sounds really nasty. <laughs> a turbo rat, uh, a delay, uh, the the boss the the boss looper, you know the mm -hmm. the, the red one, the basic one, mm -hmm. and like a like an ABC splitter, mm -hmm. a and that's it. And tuner, yeah, of course. And tuner, of course, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Besides the festival in this in uh, in uh, Joshua Tree, had you played other major festivals in the states before Pickathon? Mm, we played a Freak Out in Seattle last year. Oh yeah. Which which is it's a cool festival. Yeah. But but it's another format, you know. It, it's like all over the city. It's not like just one place. Uh, concentrated. Like to be honest, not. Just because this is a Picathon podcast, <laughs> but Picathon <laughs> is the best festival we ever played oh. in or out of the US, man. It it was <laughs> amazing. Like Thank we you. had a we had a blast. Yeah, I, I I wanna cry because it's over. I, like, I wanna <laughs> do it again. Like, it, I, it, was, uh, it was so Tell him uh what happened at the end, the last day before leaving. Ah. Uh, so yeah. It, uh, like we played on on Thursday, first night at the Cherry Hill. Oh my that god! That was that show. Like for Ooh. me, was awesome. And yeah, man, like all the people, the the, the time it was was like around nine p.m. Mm -hmm. Just I think it, it's a great time. Everybody's just tuned. Ah, this is also the first tour we tour with uh, now the engineer or friend Alan. Yeah, who we love. Super I'm awesome. Gonna see this weekend again, and he's really good. And he knows us, like he knows mm -hmm. our music. He knows, he knows me. He knows how I record the stuff and mix it. So he knows what to do, and and that was really helpful. Like, like I think it's really helpful for the impact of the show to sound uh, the way it should, because because it's just two of us. Like, if you fuck up one thing, it's like you <laughs> fuck up like two members of a band. You know, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Che well, yeah, Cherry Hill was amazing. Then we went on Friday. We went to play Boise, which I saw on the map, and I think I was like, "Eh, that is close." It was like seven or six hours. <laughs> we played there. It was cool. It was cool playing Boise. And then we came back on Saturday just to enjoy the festival. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Then we did Sunday on, at the barn. Mm -hmm. which, oh man, it, I have some videos of people like flying. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was there. I was, I was in, that was the first like mosh pit I've been in since pr after COVID. I was like in, <laughs> totally in that mosh oh. pit. I was like, okay, I'm going in, I'm doing it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor. It's an honor that you um, lost your, again, your virginity after <laughs> COVID of mosh pits with, yes. with, with us. Yeah. <laughs> And it was great. And, oh, it was so fun. Yeah, it was so awesome. And also the sessions, like everything about Picathon, we loved it. And then on Monday, we were leaving, you know, we were just packing the stuff at our car. And these guys from, like, they were from, like, artists in hospitality. And they were like, guys, do you want, like, some snacks? Like, we got so much shit, we don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and they gave us, like, some uh, some good stuff, you know, like, like cashews and... <laughs> and Black olives and, and, and shit and a bottle of tequila also like <laughs> and and then I met a guy I saw a guy from I don't remember his name but but 
the the record label is uh, Craving Groovy. You know who I'm talking Fluff about? Fluff and Gravy, yeah. Fluff and yeah, yeah. So so he was like, "Hey man, uh, I have a, like a place if you <laughs> want to do a show." Like, yeah, man, we have like three uh, spare days. I think we're gonna spend in Portland, which uh, we we didn't have planned. Like we were supposedly driving to South again because we had to play. Uh, Salt Lake City mm-hmm. on Thursday, and we met wonderful people at the festival, we, which uh, uh, John and, and his family he, he, he invited us to stay at their place for a couple of days to get a cool shower. Yep, you know, Mark Sabat, nice food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, it, yeah, man. Like these guys were 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 awesome to us, and yeah, and we also did that secret show which you uh, which guys from Picketon shared the flyer. And that thing was packed. It was cool. Two days also. later on Tuesday, right? Like all of a sudden, one one little announcement and it was packed. You guys brought yeah. you brought the house down again. And actually a ton of pretty much everybody there was most of them had been from Pickathon, but I mean word spread and it was it was yeah. it warmed my heart to know that like people rallied for you guys big time. That was so, so fun. Yeah, it was super fun, and it also I think made us realize how important uh, is a festival like Picathon. Like people uh, really are open to hear yeah. new stuff, and if they like it, they really do. Like it's it's not something that just happens, and and it's always like it makes an impact, at least on the on the festival goers, and maybe uh, uh, it gets the word out. You know, like. Like yeah, it was it was the best week of the tour for sure. That's so awesome to hear. Like yeah, we loved having you. It was it's one of my favorite things for besides going through this, you know, we're now we're in this pick time of discovery trying to figure out music. When people, you know, have just come in there to discover music, right? They're really open. They're really into it. They're no, you're not background. Nothing is background there. It's not like you're playing in a bar, leave me alone, turn that stuff down. I'm talking to my friends. It's like, no, you they're 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 hungry. They're going to devour you, you know. And when somebody brings the energy like you you guys do, it's people are just like going to give it right back. As hard as you bring it, they're going to give it you right back, right? <laughs> yeah. We it's felt such a it. it's yeah. such a glorious thing about that kind of why, I, you know, why I just love the kind of music you play and is that it's just it's so immediate the energy is the transfer between audience and music is so immediate and so real right it's it's, yeah it was awesome that's so awesome we felt we felt loved and welcome and appreciated there yeah well i think you know big hope is that coming through now like you now you now you can do a full proper west coast tour right like venues yeah i yeah what is what do you guys are you guys looking at at the future are you guys have a, any your last record was in 2021 a bunch of singles have come out yeah yeah a, a couple of singles now uh, i'm working on on new stuff like we have we have worked on one one song uh, together that I, but i'm working on a new stuff to, uh, to put it out as soon as as uh, we can and and we also like are releasing this record with a cool American la- label like that we like a lot. Can you tell and us or is that secret? I don't know if it's secret or not. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, like, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to say it because it was like a shine, handshake deal and it's already on. But we talked in the Red Records, you know, which has like put out a lot of like garage, rock, psych rock, yeah. and a lot of heavy stuff that we love. So... Oh yeah, yeah, we're doing that. That's so awesome. we are excited, and we're like getting some stuff over in the in the U.S. Uh, with uh, uh, also like a publishing guys who are trying to because our music. Some I don't know why, but lately it has been placed. Uh, so that's that's cool too. Like that's that's good money and good exposure. I think it's it's both. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, working on that and 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 trying to figure out the next the next tour, for that's, sure. That's so great. Well, I think you know, of course, anytime you come through this area, 
we're going to be all over it. So we're going to that area next year. Like uh, we will be playing a festival in Seattle in March, which I can announce right now. But I think I don't. I don't think we're doing the same thing, like driving all the way up. But I think we're flying. But if 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 we play Seattle, we will love yep. to play Portland too. Like that's so. Oh yeah. So all right, we're pre-announcing a yeah. show in Portland. Let's yeah. start the papers. Let's do that for sure. <laughs> we're down. Yes. Awesome. Hey guys, well thanks for coming on today. It was just like a super pleasure having you guys. Hey. Really, really, really fun. It was. It's like uh, some of my best memories of the whole year was with you guys at the festival after you're like two of the nicest, coolest people. Like, I mean, you're going to like mess up everyone's view of rock stars. <laughs> have to like, <laughs> you like just like nice people and not like, yeah, but it's, I love it. So thank you. It's, thank yeah. you. it's really awesome. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for having us at the festival. You are also one of the nicest festival promoters we met. Like the moment we arrived, you, hey, I, I, I'm sale. I, I put this thing with a lot of people. Like I started this shit. So, <laughs> Ah, yeah, we have an interview at the, around the bar. Hey, come, I will show you, and you two, you should walk to us to there. So that was like a really good welcome. And uh, yeah, welcoming. Oh, uh, that's right. That's it. That's it. And man, it's gonna be a lot more. We're gonna see you guys, and I'm gonna be excited just to to like reach you on and like see the the future because I think great things are gonna happen. You guys make amazing music, great live shows. And it's just, it's just, everything is there. So it's so great. And uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you, everyone. This is the end of Pickathon Podcast, episode 26 with Sergeant Papers. And uh, if you don't know the records, go buy them all. Buy the vinyl. Don't just don't stream oh, it. Go buy their vinyl. There's no more, but buy buy the buy what? the new one. Yeah, it will, it will come out next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just do whatever you can. Send them bags of money. We'll be <laughs> that's what they need. Anyways, thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Pickathon podcast. This podcast is produced by Zale Schoenborn, Tanner McCullough, and Evan Throckmorton. Our artwork is by Travis Bone and additional support by Ryan Stiles. The music you heard in this episode was by our guest of honor, Sergeant Papers. The songs included were Pank, Sandwich de Munda, and the one we're riding out on right now, Diosito. Be sure to check out our Pickathon Patreon, where we have exclusive interviews, content, and insights into the Pickathon world. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you hear your podcasts. And tell a friend about where they can get on the Pickathon bandwagon. Thank you to the whole Pickathon family. And like Zale said, we'll catch you all next week. Bye.